So you're in the market for an amp modeling system. Now you want something physical. You want something, of course, that's gonna have good quality amp models built in. Perhaps you want good access to your effects or other features, uh, but you don't quite have the budget for something like a full-blown Helix or a Kemper or something like that. But you definitely want something that's gonna get the job done in the studio, perhaps live or at your rehearsals. Well, have you considered the GX100 from Boss? Well, if it's not on your short list, it quite possibly should be. And today I'm gonna to discuss why. Yes, today I'm talking about the GX100 from Boss, possibly one of the most misunderstood amp modelers in the market. It doesn't seem to have all the same hype surrounding some of the other amp modeling products, but should it? We're gonna to discuss today. Now this is here courtesy of my good friends at Long McQuaid, that's Canada's largest musical instrument retailer with stores all across Canada, never one too far away, and on the web at long-mcquade.com. Now, speaking of Long McQuaid, I was over there recently covering the new Mesa Boogie Mark 7, and we got to meet Marco, uh, if you missed that video, I'll put a link in the description. But we started talking about modelers and it turns out that he's a big fan of this one, but feels it just doesn't have that hype that some of the amp modeling products uh, have surrounding them. But if you consider the price point, the features and the quality that's generally attributed to Boss products, it definitely should be in the conversation. So he's gonna take us through a few uh, details of this uh, particular modeler and even some challenges that some of you might've experienced while using this product. And uh, we're gonna dig in and see if perhaps we can change some minds. All right, let's jump in. So one perceived issue that plagues the GX100 is something that's pretty consistent with all modelers, because I think in the digital age, we have something called preset mentality, where we just fly through a bunch of presets and say, well, we like it or we don't like it. But I'll tell you something, I've lost sleep uh, plenty of times trying to dial in a nice tone with any number of my tube amps. I don't care if it's Marshall, Hughes and Kettner, or Rev, it doesn't matter. Always hearing things that I don't like, and that's the whole tone shaping experience. Well, modelers need to go through the same process. You know, they're all set at a default and perhaps it sounds a little harsh to your ear, it's possible, but the whole process of finding that tone that works for you means that you need to dig in. So one of the things to look at on the GX100 is the built-in EQ and Marco over at the Long McQuaid North York store is gonna take us through some of the things he does to tweak the EQ to get a tone that he likes. <laughs> A lot of modelers have this problem of being really shrill. They have a lot of high end to them, which can be fine sometimes if you want to be really present in a mix situation. But if you're just practicing at home, like you just got this thing for the first time, you're trying to like dial something in that's usable to practice with, it can be a bit grating on the ears. So we're gonna see what I've done to kind of make it sound closer to what I like. And I'm gonna access a better view here by pressing these three buttons up here. It's like knob view. So now I can see like a much bigger screen of all the uh, frequencies that I can kind of cut in and out. And this applies for uh, any block where you wanna see more parameters. So for this one, I'm gonna scroll over to the high end portion. And I have like a pretty significant cut at 16K and 8K. And this type of thing can really push a lot of modelers, not just a GX100, to make them sound a bit more realistic. A lot of real life cabs, when you're trying it out in the store, are gonna sound a bit warmer. They're not gonna be as like high-end focused. So that's kind of like, I find a big gap to bridge to get these things to sound a lot better um, is just playing with the EQ, being really aggressive with your uh, high frequency cuts. I always like to dial them out way, way heavy and then work backwards from there to kind of get a closer sound to what I want. <laughs>
So one of the criticisms of the GX100 is that it doesn't have a lot of built-in amp models, but there's some features that are overlooked about the amplifiers in this particular unit that are worth taking notice of, and Marco's gonna walk us through those. So I have my EQ running out after my two amps running in parallel. So that's pretty novel for something uh, at this price point. The closest thing would be the HX Stomp, which can run amps in parallel, but it eats a lot of DSP power. And it's, it's very nice to have for um, getting a wide range of tones, which this unit can definitely get. So the next thing we want to touch on that this unit gets overlooked for is it has 23 amp models. How, how funny is that? Talk about amps. <laughs> anyway, so uh, 23 amps. I don't know if that guy's ordering 23 amps or not. <laughs> but regardless, if you got 23 amps in a room, that's a lot of amps, man. And most of these amps in here are gonna be the essentials, like you know your Fender, your Vox, your Marshall. But within those amps themselves, you have a gain switch. So in essence, you have three flavors of each amp to kind of toggle to for different ranges of gain. So for this uh, Fender Deluxe amp I have right here, I have it on a high gain mode. I love that sound, and to get that out of another modeler, I'd have to run some type of overdrive in front of it, or after it, or whatever, to kind of get more push sounds out of it. But that takes another block. That's more DSP for that modeler. The fact I can do that on one block is very useful, and it gives this unit a lot of range for one model. One amp model can give you the range of like three amps. Sometimes less is more, but if you think about it, you got a lot of options here with the gain switch. So regardless of how you plan on using your modeler, the build quality certainly is essential in ensuring you're gonna get a lot of years of enjoyment out of the product. Other things to consider certainly are the onboard features, the accessibility to different features within the modeler, and the ergonomics. I mean, how are you using it? How easily is it to access those features that you need to recall quickly? Well, the GX100 boasts a number of features that are worth taking note of. So one thing I wanna to touch on that's overlooked is the build quality, which is weird, because it's a boss product. These things are kind of known for their build quality when it comes to their, any of their units, really. So the first thing I'm gonna to touch on is the expression pedal. This thing is fantastic, feels very smooth, made out of metal, and has a really nice ridge feeling to it, so you're not gonna like slip and slide all over it. And you can assign it to different things, like volume swells, uh, wah, filters, and any parameter that you kind of want to set it to for like you said to changes in gain, changes in mids, changes in highs, changes in whatever. You can even, you know, it's just really useful for just having a giant range of stuff that you can toggle through. Next thing is the button layout. So you get a ton of buttons here and the closest thing that comes to this thing in terms of its DSP would be the HX Stomp. And the HX Stomp doesn't have nearly as many buttons as this until you spend to the uh, Stomp XL, but the Stomp XL doesn't have an expression pedal either. So you get a nice blend of a lot of buttons and a great quality expression pedal. The last thing I wanna mention is this lip here. So there's actually a two-tiered system for the bottom row buttons and the top row buttons. Now, if you're a hobbit like me, we got big feet, I don't wanna hit multiple buttons with my giant clown shoes. So it's really nice to be able to have the separation of the buttons here to make it a little cleaner when I'm playing live. And this is something that um, a lot of modelers don't do even at, at a higher price point. And I really wish more modelers would do this two-tiered system. It's very comfortable. Oh, yeah. 
So I really want to thank Marco once again for his insight and sharing his knowledge about the GX100. Uh, we were having a conversation afterwards and a couple of complaints that people have about this device. Number one is it only has unbalanced outputs. Now in a live situation, if you would really need balanced outputs, uh, the use of a direct box will certainly remedy that. Certainly if it has all the other features that you need, it really shouldn't be a deal breaker uh, if this is the, the modeler for you and it's just missing that one feature, easy workaround. The other complaint is that it doesn't have a lot of built-in cab IRs, but there's a, but 12 blank blocks in here. You can import a third-party cab IR. So really, in my opinion, I like to mix and match, you know, cab IRs with different amplifiers. It's another way to sort of customize the experience and shape your own tones. So you can import your own uh, third-party cab IRs into this device. And one bonus feature, it's an add-on that you can purchase, is you can gain wireless access to the deep dive features on the GX100 with a Bluetooth module. You can connect it to your phone or your tablet. So it's just even easier access to all of the deep features in the GX100. Certainly something to think about when evaluating if this is the right product for you. Well, there you have the GX100 from Boss. You know, I have to admit before I did this video, I hadn't really paid much attention to this device and I'm glad I had a closer look at it because I think if you examine that price to feature ratio, you're gonna be hard pressed to find another device that's gonna match this unit. And it is a Boss product. You know, think of a Boss pedal. It's as built as tough as that. And having all of this access, the, the two tiered buttons, the expression pedal, it's got a lot going on for the price point. Definitely worth checking out. I'm really curious, maybe you glossed over this the first time. Are you willing to give it another shot? Perhaps you already own one and you know what a gem it is. I'd love to hear from all of you. That's what the comment section is for. Uh, but that being said, I want to thank my good friends at Long McQuaid uh, for supplying the GX100. They've been super supportive in providing me all kinds of gear that I can share with you guys, and I really appreciate it. Uh, you can show them some love. Uh, check out long-mcquaid.com, and if you're in Canada, uh, drop into one of their stores and uh, maybe try the GX100. If you really did enjoy this video though, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. If you want to support this channel, I'm on Patreon. I've got affiliate links in the description, including a list of a lot of the gear I have in here at my studio, including some essentials. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything more, but it kicks a little bit back to the studio here and helps me produce more content just like this, and I really appreciate that. Uh, I also have a merch. All the information is in the description. Every little bit helps, and I really appreciate that. But the most important thing is to check out another video. I've got one waiting for you right here. And remember, you don't need a band to rock and roll. I look forward to seeing you again in another video.